Schisms. I think it's appropriate to do the episode synopsis in the alien's native language. I might have messed up on some of the tenses, but I think I got it. <laughs> the Enterprise is charting a globular cluster, as they tend to do, and Riker wakes up from a nightmare that the holodeck stopped working. Is that a joke? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jordy says it's going to take three days to chart the cluster, but he and Data have a plan to increase sensor efficiency by freaking 25%. By channeling warp energy into the sensors. I wish you could improve the functionality of technology by just channeling more energy into it. Data reminds Riker about a poetry reading later, which I expected to be goofy, and I was not disappointed. And I liked how stupid Riker looked through this whole opening with his dumb hair. Is your taxonomic nomenclature an endothermic quadruped, carnivorous by nature? And the show does a great job of making us feel the same way the characters do, by making us sit through way too much of his poems. It was almost three minutes straight. And we see Picard sitting very close to a girl that we've never seen before, which was interesting. But we don't find out who she is. Yeah, he's gonna show her his iambic pentameter later. <laughs> Soon we'll be flying by Venus. Do you want to look at my p <laughs> <laughs> The planet we're going to is made of rocks. Do you want to look at my <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes space makes me sick. Do you want to look at my <laughs> <laughs> And then Riker falls asleep. And that's our intro for the episode. How intriguing. An episode about people falling asleep. Riker goes to Beverly and describes the symptoms of sleep apnea, but says it's only been happening for a few days. And when she goes to scan him with the medical probe, he gets very irritated. She suggests drinking warm milk before bed. Have you ever done that? No. Does it actually work? Yeah, it's supposed to kind of work. Jordy prepares to test his warp power transfer idea and see if it ends up blowing up the ship. And Data asks him for feedback about his poetry. Jordy is worried about hurting Data's feelings, forgetting that his best friend, the robot, <laughs> has no feelings. And he confirms Data's suspicion that his poetry did not emotionally affect the listeners. Suddenly, Data detects an explosion in a cargo bay, and Jordy says there's three people in there, so they take a team to check it out. When they get to the door, Morph says there could still be a residual discharge, but Data, for some reason, still chooses to stand directly in front of the door while everyone else moves out of the way. But when they open the door, everything is fine, and Jordy tells Riker it may have been a sensor glitch. Caused by his sensor modifications. I guess because they were using so much warp power? But if the sensors can't tell the difference between an increased power flow and an explosion, <laughs> maybe you should focus on improving the internal sensors first. Riker asks Jordy to come by his quarters in the morning because he's having trouble waking up, and when he goes to bed, he prints out some warm milk, but barely drinks any of it, demonstrating his true opinion of Beverly's medical advice. <laughs> when Jordy goes to wake him up, Riker is confused because he feels virtually no time has passed. We see Worf going to the blue barber for a trim, and Worf has a reaction to his scissors and aggressively grabs his arm and leaves without a word of explanation. Jordy and Riker are still searching for why the ship registered the explosion, and now Jordy seems a little bit tired too. And the way he talks about the conduits they were running the warp power through, it sounds like he doesn't actually understand how any of it works. And then he tells Data that his visor cut out twice that day. Beverly says there's a bacterial infection that doesn't match anything they know about, and she'll need to sterilize the area, which will take a while. And I would hope that she took a sample for further study before sterilizing the area, since they have no idea what it is, but I'm not a doctor like her. And when Jordy goes back to Data, Data says he didn't have time to go to sickbay because he's only been gone for a little over a minute, but the computer verifies that more time has in fact gone by and Data just doesn't remember. So Jordy starts a full diagnostic on the entire cargo bay. Up on the bridge, Riker orders the ship to be moved to a different location, but Ensign Rager is having trouble. He insults her, 
then tries to mansplain how to compensate for gravimetric interference, which is definitely something that the computer would do automatically. And when he sits at the console, he starts acting weird, but then he says nothing's wrong. During the diagnostic, Jordy and Data detect a particle emission and spot a bright, glowing panel that I hope wasn't like that the entire time, and people just didn't notice it. And he says the particles originate from subspace. They call in Picard, and Data explains that the panel is in a state of quasi-molecular flux. And there are tetrion particles, which they say are not stable in normal space. And if they spread, it could cause a hull breach. And Jordy says the particles shouldn't even be able to exist in our universe, but if it spreads, they can beam that part of the wall out into space and put a force field in its place. But if it's something that shouldn't exist in our universe, would the computer be able to properly interpret how to break it down into a matter pattern? Riker's telling Troy about feeling trapped at the console earlier, and she says he's not the first person to express these feelings, and suggests they all gather together for group therapy because she's not getting paid enough for this bullshit. <laughs> So she gathers together Riker, Worf, Geordi, and Extra number 94, who I assumed was going to die. They go to the holodeck in an attempt to reconstruct what they can from memory. Riker says he felt trapped and remembers a smooth surface, and Geordi, Worf, and Extra number 94 all add their thoughts as well. And at this point, I was suspicious of Extra number 94 because it made me think of Macduff in Conundrum or that other alien in Allegiance. At one point when they're trying to recreate things, the computer demonstrates its poor programming by giving Troy a table without any trouble, but then asking very specific questions when Jordy asks for a light. Yeah, I like how the computer annoys them by how specific they have to be about everything, but when they indicate the table should be made of metal, not wood, it completely alters pretty much everything about the table. And before they even started recreating things, I was already suspecting alien abduction. Eventually, they create a restraining operating table with bright lights, sharp tools, and a lot of weird clicking sounds. I've been in this room before. We've all been here before. It turns out Beverly detected exactly what was going on way earlier, but attributed it to something else. When I examined him earlier today, I thought it was the result of a bacterial infection, but now I'm finding the same thing in all three. And she's also detected tetrions, the particles that should not exist in our universe, inside of these people. I guess she missed that before. So what about that unknown strain of bacteria she detected earlier? Was she just making that up? And if those tetrion particles are not supposed to exist in our universe, why would she be able to scan for them? Well, we've seen on the show many times, they do one scan where everything looks normal, and then they do another scan and find everything that's wrong. Data comes in and says his systems show that he was not on the ship for over an hour earlier and there are currently two crew members unaccounted for. Beverly finds evidence that Riker's arm has been surgically removed and reattached. The skeletal structure in your radius and ulna is offset by 0.02 microns. If things were off by that small of an amount, I don't think she would be able to tell the difference. Three of your atoms are misplaced. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Down in the cargo bay, Jordy and Data ask the crew member doing the diagnostic if he found anything, and he has to point out the giant glowing light portal in the middle of the room. <laughs> Jordy says it's a spatial rupture that appears to be controlled by someone. He says that the signals from the modifications he made to the sensor array go deep into subspace and they may have attracted the attention of intelligent beings. And they end up putting a force field around it. Then Worf tells Picard that one of the missing people has been returned to his quarters. And when Beverly goes to check it out, she finds him wheezing and looking like a zombie. And says his blood is turning into a liquid polymer, which sounds pretty painful. <sighs> Don't give me your science bullshit about <laughs> liquid polymers and whatever. <laughs> Didn't make any sense. They have a big meeting, and Jordy says they have five or six hours before the portal reaches the hull. He thinks they could seal it with a graviton pulse, but they have to do it at this source. And then he says there are basically an infinite number of universes that these emissions could be coming from. Data says they can't lock onto the affected section to beam it out anymore, and Worf suggests constructing a homing device, which was a stupid idea because they would have to send it to the right place first. But then Riker says since they've taken him every night so far, they'll probably do it again so he can take a homing device with him, which made sense. I hoped he was right and they would take him again, 
and they didn't turn other people into Senator Kellys while they were waiting. Picard asks Beverly if she can find something to counteract whatever sedative is being used so Riker can stay conscious. She says it'll be risky, but she can do it, because she's a Starfleet medical doctor. And Jordy gives him a homing beacon. And he puts it on Riker's arm in the most inconvenient place possible, right on the inside of his elbow. So it's no surprise that we see that he has moved it in the next scene, where he lies in bed waiting to be abducted. He gets pulled into a light portal and appears on a metal operating table surrounded by shuffling, clicking bug aliens. He feigns sleep to get a good look at his surroundings while the Enterprise is working on locking in on the homing signal. Data tells Picard they have only 14 minutes before the containment field around the portal fails. So Picard asks Geordi if he can just strengthen the field. I would think they would have done that already if it was possible, but Geordi reveals that it is in fact possible. The clicking aliens start to probe Riker, which of course we can't show on this channel. <laughs> Jordy locks onto the homing signal, and they start emitting the graviton pulse. The bug aliens detect it and start countering it, so Jordy starts countering that, and basically ends up dropping a graviton bomb into the rupture. It seems to be working, and Riker gets up from the table and shoots one of the aliens. Well, I also noticed he chose to shoot the alien in the foot. And the guy's acting was really bad in the alien costume, when he, like, jumps back. Must have been a soccer player. <laughs> or football for our viewers across the pond. Riker grabs Rager and jumps through the portal right before it closes, emerging in the cargo bay. They supposedly had a force field around it. Why didn't Riker just bounce off the force field and fall back through the portal? And Riker and Data watch a sparkly light zoom out of the ship, which seems to be par for the course on how they eject aliens from this show. Picard tells us via Captain's Log that everything is cool now, and thankfully they do a post-event discussion instead of just ending the episode like they've done before. Data says the aliens were Solanogen-based, which prevented them from coming to our dimension because they couldn't survive here. They somehow created a pocket of our universe to keep their abductees alive, so how were the aliens that we saw in there alive? They were taking people to learn how to modify their cellular makeup to survive over here, and Jordy says they started doing the whole thing because they detected his sensor modifications, so no one should ever try to increase the sensor efficiency again. <laughs> Data suggests the aliens were nothing but explorers, and that the glowing energy thing they saw may have been a probe. But Riker strong arms his way into the discussion. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> <laughs> to say there was no way, they were just curious. Which is not a logical conclusion at all. The end schisms overall this was a cool idea for an episode but i also said that with allegiance which was also an alien abduction episode like that one this felt kind of like a twilight zone episode in some ways i liked the overall idea and i liked that they kept the aliens creepy instead of trying to humanize them however this devolved into yet another episode heavy on nonsense science crap and it took way too long for anything to actually happen and even then, the fake science stuff was the focus of a lot of it. For me, this was another disappointing episode for Season 6, even though it was more interesting than most of them. Also, Troy had a new haircut. <laughs> I didn't like it, but I'm willing to give it a chance. I gave it a C-, and that's for her haircut and for the episode. I give it a C, too many unanswered questions, and even though the ending was very open, I doubt we'll ever hear anything about these aliens again. It reminded me of the end of Conspiracy, which ended pretty much the same way. And Beverly hopefully grabbed a strain of that unknown bacteria, and they have whatever else that tricorder picked up while Riker was there. There's a lot of room for exploration, which they won't take. Which is ironic, considering they're a ship of explorers. When they took Data, how was he not aware of what was happening? He doesn't sleep, so the sedative wouldn't do anything to him, right? Did they somehow figure out how he worked to the point that they could erase some of his memories? Wouldn't crew members suddenly not being on the ship trigger some sort of alarm somewhere? Seems like out in the deep unknowns of space, that would be a given. The aliens seemed alien enough. I'm glad they weren't just people speaking English out in a different universe. I was kind of hoping they'd break off Riker's arm again while he was awake. That would have been awesome. <laughs> Could have switched it out with one of Rager's arms. 
His arm's been turned into a liquid polymer. <laughs> <laughs> the whole breach seemed a little unnecessary. They already had these aliens just grabbing people. That seemed intense enough for me. I felt like the ship exploding as another threat was not really needed. This is the shortest wrap-up that I ever had, so... This is probably the longest one I've ever had. <laughs> Could they have a science team do a controlled version of the sensor modifications? Not necessarily on the ship itself, but somewhere else? I would think that being able to have particles from another universe exist in your own universe would warrant some more scientific exploration. And can we get an audiobook of Data's poems? <laughs> it would be great when I'm having trouble sleeping. <laughs> Or we could use it as a suicide enhancer. <laughs> oh, I lied. I do have one more. Oh, jeez. Did you know my birthday is in September? Would you like to look at my... <laughs> <laughs> I like how they're all the same. <laughs> Maybe after this poetry reading, we can play checkers. Would you like to look at my... <laughs> I'm in command of the spacecraft. Would you like to look at my <laughs> <laughs> What did you think of the poetry reading, Alice? Would you like to look at my <laughs> <laughs> If I had one wish from a genie, I'd ask you to look at my <laughs> <laughs> Like and subscribe. <laughs>